All right, I'm here with Chuck today, and we're at the Sanford Museum. Can you tell us your role here at the museum, Chuck? I'm the uh, current president of the Sanford Area uh, Historical Society, which runs the museum. Can you tell us how long the museum has been here? The museum's birthday is this year, 50 years. It started during the centennial, uh, which was 50 years ago. This is the Cessna Centennial for the for Sanford area, um, all the communities around here. And we're at 150 years since they were founded. So. Can you tell us what happened the day the dams broke? Were you here or at your own house and how that day progressed? Yeah, I was at my own house and um, once they uh, said the dams broke, uh, they said to evacuate. So we did evacuate. Um, it took us all of the next day to finally find a route in and we had to walk into our house. And I had a vehicle still at the house so I was able to come down to the museum. Um, at that time, I was hoping you know, everything was all right, you know, expecting it to be all right. And uh, when I got here, it was uh, disheartening to see all of the all the buildings had uh, taken water and were pretty uh, muddy and that kind of stuff. So, looks like you have flood levels here on each one of these buildings, kind of showing the, how high the water went on them. Uh, the, yeah, that's uh, about seven inches in the main museum um, that we took. Um, it was enough to get anything on the floor wet and then of course any of the artifacts that you had to clean the feet you know before they could be brought back in so all the artifacts that were movable were taken out of all the buildings and put into the back of the depot the only uh, the only building that did not flood was the very back side back part of the depot because that's higher for the for the freight you know and uh, but the front, the, the foyer part flooded, but every building took water, depending on the building, everywhere from you know seven inches here in the main museum up to about three, maybe three and a half in the church, so. Can we kind of take a tour around now and walk around and just sure. show us Why what not? you guys have here? Yeah, well, right here we lost our, our, uh, our sign that said the Sanford Centennial Museum and uh, it's long gone now. Um, it had two bushes and it only had one left and so we saved one bush and moved it so I wanted them to match when mm -hmm. we put, put them back. So, um, the, yep. uh, of course, we have the park right here in this area, and this is Saginaw Road, just so people kind of know where we're at. I know all these logs were actually gone off of that as well. Looks like you got a few back on there now. Yes, all the logs were, were gone. Um, the log that's in front, well, all the logs uh, you see there um, are log mark logs, and the only log that we had at the big wheels that was a log mark log was the one that was in front too long to put on the wheels itself the other ones were just a couple a couple pine you know logs that we had gotten locally and uh, the uh, log that it took the log mark log that it took came out of the Chippewa River two years ago the ice had plucked it up and uh, set it up on the bank 
and the people contacted us and was able to retrieve that log. So that log, we're guessing it's somewhere between here and Saginaw, yeah. and, but the, the flood did give us back uh, log mark logs and all those logs that you see on the, on the big wheel now are log mark logs. So. I saw David Randall's been getting quite a few just south of the Edenville Dam up there yes. as well. Yeah, we've, uh, we've uh, collected enough logs so we, we've been uh, taking a few log marks off of the end of some logs so that people have gotten and uh, we, can't, uh, we can't really display too many more logs. So. But we, we were happy to take log marks. You know, it's interesting to have them. There was over, over 50 different log marks, 50 different companies that logged in the area. So there's a lot of different log marks that's available. So, um, the big wheel itself would not have stayed if it hadn't gotten caught on, on the one leg of the, of the roof there. And it, uh, the water in the wheel itself jacked the whole building uh, all all around we had to dig around the, the post and, and pull everything back in place with come alongs and stuff so and then we filled it and of course um, remulched and it be, before we put the big wheels back big wheels have been painted since then uh, so they look pretty nice now The mulch uh, in the area that you'll see uh, that we have so far was donated you know, by Midland Mulch, which is very nice. You know, they gave us quite a, quite a bit of mulch, so it really helped out making things look better. So we still have areas that we're going to have to, you know, get some more mulch once once we put the sign back and that kind of stuff. We'll, we'll get some more mulch you know, from them. So let's uh, take a walk down here a little sure. ways and. And the flood took most of the split rail fence on this side of the of the uh, the hill. And uh, this fence that's back in place now. Yeah, that's all. That's all brand new split rail fence. So it's all been replaced. And this whole area was uh, pretty full of uh, debris and stuff, and it was all cleaned up and brush removed. Of course, they they had to replace the pole. The pole used to be up by that big tree there. Um, actually to, to the north of the tree by about three or four feet, but they wanted to straighten the line out. So, so uh, they, they moved the pole down and then we were waiting for them to come take the pole and they, they were a little slower than I wanted to be, so I, t I took the pole out myself. So, What's the story behind this shark sitting over here? The shark is, uh, is my cousin's uh, entry into a uh, a milk jug race two years ago. Uh, so it, the shark is actually full of milk jugs and it floats pretty good. So that was his entry into our, our yearly milk jug race. So um, he thought well, that'd be cute to bring it down here. And it, it draws quite a bit of attention. So. I know there was a lot of people asking about it on my channel when I walked behind it. They were saying, watch out for the land shark. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I know when we walked by here, right after the dams, I, there was a lot of the pews sitting out here on the church, uh -huh. kind of air drying as well. Yeah, they, uh, the, the church probably took just about the most amount of water of, of any of the buildings. Um, and all the, the pews were never fastened down to the floor. So they all tipped over and they were all, all full of mud. So we brought them all out and power washed them. And uh, we can go into there and, okay. and yeah, take a look at it now. Take a look and you can kind of tell us what each one of these buildings look like after the flood happened and what you yeah. did since. 
Yeah, the, uh, the, the amazing thing is how much mud you're walking through. And, and I, I think our grass likes it. I think it thinks it's fertilizer, so it, it's coming back very nicely. But all the, all the pews have been restained and are, we're in the process of finishing them. And then we'll pull them back out and we'll go after the floor. They were all tipped over. The, the pulpit was tipped over. The organ stayed upright, but the, the crosses were gone, you know, from the, I, I don't know if that was part of the cleaning or what. But once all the buildings were all pushed out with mud, push, the mud pushed out, uh, we, we took all the, the lower windows out and started power washing all the buildings. And once we power washed them, then we uh, uh, decontaminated them all for mold. And then I put a request out to the community for uh, fans. And we had over 35 fans brought into the museum to dry the whole complex. Um, it, well, that was within three days we had them all mucked out and all the artifacts moved out into the depot, pushed out and power washed and de decontaminated. And then we started drying them all. And uh, if it wasn't for about 160, 170 different volunteers, there's no way we could have done all that in the three days. So um, it, it's just the local community and outside, you know, even from out of state came in and helped to the Sanford Strong. So it was very nice. You know, it, it's funny because you get it all done and then you go back to and you start, you know, wiping and cleaning the walls and stuff and found out that the, the little little closet up there what had still had some books in it that were soaking mm -hmm. wet and had actually had a coffee can full of water in it, you know, just, you know. So it was interesting, but um, a lot of help cleaning the buildings and stuff. And like I said, it got above the window sills on, on these little windows here, so it was uh, it was pretty high. Yeah, so, so pretty much right there at the bottom of the wood too, and the yeah, right about the, the yeah at the top of the of the wainscoting. Yep. It's kind of hard to see from here, but here I'm going to do this. This is will show the mud. Put my foot there. You can see carpets on muddy. The, uh, this one will come through the, the flood pretty well. Um, the town hall um, actually um, t took uh, pretty good water, two and a half feet or so. Uh, it actually kind of buckled the floor in it. So it uh, is not, we're not even opening it right now. Um, this will be the last project that we undertake, you know, and, uh, and right now we're kind of using it a little bit for storage for the, the other building, the schoolhouse you'll see we'll go into, into next, but this, uh, this building um, will have to probably do something with the floor. It got this big old, old cement on it, but it's still, it's still buckled up and stuff, so I think we'll probably pull the floor in here and have to redo it. Get down to the subfloor and see what's happening with it. So, but uh, yeah, a lot of, lot of information in this building that uh, people like. And it used to be the police station when the building's at downtown Sanford, they actually had the Sanford police station in this building, so in the little corner there. So we'll get it set back up, but it will take a little bit. Just a quick pan around here in this room. You can see there's mud left in here from the water. The suit's gotten muddy. The table legs are all muddy.
chair. You see how far up the mud went on that chair. Hmm. All right. Oh, let me step around here real quick. The schoolhouse is very popular, uh, the one-room schoolhouse. It, um, it, it also had the floor buckle in it. And it, you can see it took about a, a foot and a half, maybe two foot of water. We're working on this one uh, intensely right now, trying to get it back set up. Um, and you can see we've replaced the floor. We got a very nice, uh, uh, half price for the wood to replace the floor. You know, and people are very generous when it comes to, to helping out the flood victims. And this was from Gable Lumber up on, on uh, Eastman and, and um, you know, Eastman and Bombay. And they gave us a nice, uh, nice deal on the hickory. And so we're, we're slated to sand it tomorrow and then we'll put a finish on it, put the trim around it, and then move the desk back in. And this room, this building will be done. It'll be, it's all been painted, the windows have been repainted and everything. So we've been working, they, we've been working on, on them pretty hard, you know, so yeah. we want to try and get them back open, especially if we can have Founders Day, um, which is, will depend on, of course, on how the COVID is going, so. Which day is that? Pardon? Which, what day is Founders Day? Founders Day is September 12th, the weekend after Labor Day, so. So it's September uh, 12th and 13th, Saturday and Sunday. Making good progress. Yeah, this one's coming along. Uh, the uh, it looks great now, but the monument, you know, the war monument actually took quite a beating. Uh, with the current, the current comes around the monument and it actually dug all oh, three quarters of the way underneath the, uh, the sidewalk. And it had quite a hole underneath there. And um, Michelle, uh, uh, one of the volunteers, she spent two days on this and she just did a wonderful job putting it back the way it looks now. So. Uh, you, see, you see her down there pushing dirt on and packing mm -hmm. it underneath the sidewalk so the sidewalk would stay and stuff. So yeah, it uh, came back very nicely. We'd still need to get a, another layer of stone on top. but And the flood uh, was high enough that it got into both the, the Amish buggy and uh, the, the buggy here. Um, just barely though, so they, they came out pretty good. And again, Michelle was instrumental in cleaning those and, and getting them all straightened back up. And then uh, some of the other volunteers, you can see this looks pretty decent, but there's quite a bit of mud back in there yet, but they, they cleaned to the, push this around and push as much mud out as they could. Bunkhouse is pretty rustic, and it, the more rustic the building, the better it comes through. And that's partly what the advantage of the museum was. None of the buildings are insulated. 
And so they were able to dry, you know, from outside and inside, you know, nicely. There's no insulation in them that got soaked and, and that kind of stuff. So uh, we was able to power wash them and get them to dry out or they would have would have molded. So. Yeah, because the river is, you can kind of see it just over here on this side. Yeah. It looks pretty when, mucky when, today because what we got maybe almost an inch of rain last night. Yeah, first quite a bit. Inch. Yeah, it's, a, it's falling pretty good today. But when you realize that the, the water was, you know, up to your, up to your waist above the, the floodplain there where the, the park actually sat, that's a lot of water, you know, it's a lot of water too. One of the most interesting things I think was that the covered bridge stayed where it, where it is and it's barely fastened at all to the foundation. It, uh, it has a couple of braces in the middle that, that are, are uh, hooked to four by fours, uh, four by sixes that go down into the ground, but th that's all, you know, and they just fasten it and uh, it pretty well on the end, both ends, it just sets there and uh, it stayed where it is and you can see the flood level of it there was at the, uh, up to the halfway three quarters of the way up the windows and stuff but it, it stayed there this area took a long time for the mud to dry because of the shade and stuff and it was it was probably oh three weeks four weeks after the after the flood before we could even get down in there to straighten that fence up that's a another um, stump pour down there that we we protect so people don't run into the cables for it but uh, it took us a while to get that straightened around and uh, if you walk down there you'll still see it. everything's just got that three quarters of an inch of mud on it yet hole there we're all strained back. Go up the fence. The uh, log cabin didn't do too bad. The, it has three different levels in it. And uh, the kitchen part, though, which was added on, oh, about 12 years ago, probably it sets the highest. And it only had, you can see the mud on the, on the bottom of the door. It probably only had about three to five inches of, of water in it. But the lower part actually had quite a bit of water in it. And the flowers and the bushes, they didn't seem to mind too much. So they all, they all did really well afterward. But if you look at the floors, the floors are still gray. You know, it's hard, and you can see the power washing marks and stuff on the floor from when they power wash it. And then the lower level, it probably took the most water. It probably had a foot and a half. Straw bed, we had to replace all the straw on it and that kind of stuff. But um, other than that, 
again a rustic building they, they tend to come through pretty well it's been a lot of a lot of hours put in i'm figuring about oh i think we're probably up to over 2500 hours easily oh. on the complex between everyone yeah between all the volunteers the first time and, and all the the normal staff you know the Um, the implement barn, um, we really didn't do a whole lot with the barn equipment itself. It's, it's used to being outside and uh, it, uh, it's probably, if you go in there, it probably still has some mud on it. But uh, the, this is, we call this the barn annex. And when we remodeled the, the main museum, a lot of the artifacts that was in the, the first room came out here and we call this the carpenter shop and that's uh, farm equipment, small uh, hand farm equipment over there. And again, you can see it had about a foot of water in, in the building, so it was enough to, and there was a lot. It hadn't been really set up nicely yet. Uh, we were in the process of getting there. And you can see we got some of the artifacts up on the wall now. I'd like to try and get more of them out where people can see them better than through the glass. But um, a lot of stuff was sitting on the floor, so a lot of volunteer hours went into cleaning out everything that was here. I think it was just low enough to not get in the tractor engines. Yeah, it didn't hurt the tractor engine. Um, it did flood our tractor shed, and which sits much lower, and it got up into the starter of the tractor where it didn't go into the engine. So we were able to clean that and, and get our, our little lawn tractor you know, going and the sheds themselves, they all had to be cleaned. And I uh, actually took all the hand tools, I had uh, uh, tool chests, took them all home and washed them and sprayed them with WD-40 so they wouldn't rust. And, yeah, it, it, it's amazing, you know, what, what went on. Um, of course, everybody in the area took, took a, a beating, you know, um, not like downtown, you know, but um, all the way up to West River and then up West River, at least up to the, uh, the Catholic Church, you know, their the Methodist Parsonage basement took some water, so. Did any water end up in the trains here? Uh, no water in the train. And like I said, the back of the, of, the, of the depot was dry, but the front was wet. So what's the story behind the train here? The story behind the train, um, well, the, the train is, uh, was donated at different sections. Uh, the the boxcar and the yellow caboose in front was uh, came from CSX when they closed down the and made it into rail trail when they when they pulled it down they were able to get there now I'm hoping that all my facts are straight you know I wasn't here at that time the train uh, caboose on the end the brown one here actually used to set in front of uh, 
the train stations, well, gimmicks down in, on Bay City Road in, in uh, Midland. And you used to be able to take your ice cream or your, your food out there and set in the train and caboose and, and eat it. Uh, there's a little engine up front. Uh, it at one time worked for the uh, Maple Block Company and they used to pave uh, factory floors with uh, maple blocks and stuff so that you'd have a, a decent floor to work on. I think a lot of people don't really realize, probably even in Midland, that the rail trail actually used to be a, a train track there and before it was a actual yeah. riding trail. Yeah. We can go into the last main building is the Olson store, and uh, we can go into the depot if you'd like. Mm -hmm. The Olson store took, oh, I'd say about eight to ten inches of water in it, and unfortunately, the you know the shelves go all the way to the to the floor, so there was artifacts that were on the shelves, on the bottom shelves, and there was artifacts stored behind uh, the, the front, um, the counters and stuff, so. And you can see the flood level here. Mm -hmm. They got into this case, but not into that one. And to me, they look like they're the same height, but uh, uh, it actually was wet in that one and not in the other one. But as you can see, there's a lot of stuff on the floor, plus shelves all go down to the floor. And so it was stuff, just so. This, that bottom shelf down there and stuff yeah, behind there? Yeah, it had a lot of stuff on it. And, and underneath the counters was full of a lot of stuff too for storage. And, but. Uh, so this is, you know, all been cleaned up. You know, again, like I said, a lot of volunteer hours, you know, and. Uh, Floor's still in pretty good shape in here. Yeah, it, it came through pretty good um, because the floor was replaced when the Olson store was moved here about 20 years ago. Um, I think it was 1999, I, I believe. And uh, so it was redone. So when, you, when it's in, been refinished, it, it looked, it, it holds up better against the, the mud than the, than the other does. Now this was a building that gave us the most trouble as far as getting it, the, the humidity level down in it to, because you want to get your, your wood humidity down so it doesn't mold. And uh, we had the, the wood checked, this, this building was showing pretty high humidity in it yet, and we couldn't figure out why. We, and, and we were going to cut a hole through the floor because there was no access here. And then the guy that really helped us, you know, direct on what to do for, to save the building, he said, don't cut a hole in the floor, bust through the foundation. And that's what we've done, and I can show you that. And, mm -hmm. and we actually, when I broke through the foundation, there was four and a half inches of water in, wow. in the crawl space because it's acting like a bathtub. Now the outer buildings over by the river, they have footing drains on the inside that go, that take water out. So what we've done is, is this is gonna, there's a, a crock in there now that we put a sump pump in and it, it will now pump the water out, out into the parking lot if we, so it'll help keep this whole area a lot drier. And what we're gonna do, uh, that's why it's not done yet, but we're gonna put, uh, um, going to dig underneath the drip line for the eaves and it will carry you know more water out and keep this area drier but uh there was actually a little fish inside there when wow. you know, <laughs> that they had gotten up in and uh, um he he was caught in there and he he didn't make it to these hmm.
the uh, walks that you're on right now, they all got lifted and pushed around a little bit and started popping some of the screws. So um, there's been a new screw put in the middle of, it, of every board to, uh, to tighten it back up. It was creaking and groaning when you walked on it and you could tell that they had busted some of the screws. Now this was wet in here, but we had just had this floor redone oh probably 10 years ago and so when it, we got it uh, cleaned up it came through very nicely and like i said the the back of the depot was the only part of the uh, complex that didn't get wet actually you know you can see the mud from the artifacts yet we have yet to to clean the floor but all the 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 uh, all the artifacts had mud on the bottom of a lot of the chairs and, and stuff that was brought in here, which was all cleaned up before it went back. So there's still, still the needs to be um, damp mopped just to get the, the mud off of it. But so, yeah, that's most of the complex. Um, so this is actually a railroad station that was in use? Yeah, oh yeah, this one set, the, you know, where the trailhead is, the mm -hmm. rail trailhead right downtown, that's where this set. Yeah. And they moved and, it over here? Well, it, it actually moved over on the corner of West River Road in Saginaw for a while, so it, it took a while to get here. And there's a little bit of story that goes with this, you know, it, it set over there so, you have to excuse the door, but <laughs> set it over there so long, that the trees grew up next to it. And the guy didn't want to cut the trees down. So um, if you look, this side has got a lot shorter eaves on it than the other side. Mm -hmm. So they actually cut the eaves off in order to get the, the depot over here. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, at that time, um, they, of course, we we shingled it and, and put good boards in where the, the bad boards were and stuff. And some of the floors been replaced, but it's a, a nice historic building. Got a lot of lot of old graffiti on it from from over the years. You know, people always ask about, well, where did the graffiti come from? Well, you know, whoever came in, you know, they would they would mark it up. You know, so. Um, were there any important items that you lost that you were kind of tied to your heart that you... Um, you know, the biggest thing that... The, 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 we lost about 10%, maybe 15% of, of the artifacts, but the big thing that, that uh, we, lo we were concerned about was we had some of the uh, old township books you know, ledgers uh, were, they were in the office because they were in the process of going through them and, and they were not high enough to stay dry. People, you know, we had a lot of support from the museum, you know, association and stuff and they took those and put them in a big freeze dry uh, in, in uh, Grand Rapids and they actually froze dry them and then we've brought them back and we're in the process of drying them and we can go into Maine Museum now and you can see that and process and work. A um, lot of area rugs, you know, um, and uh, again, they, we had a lot of help from the Museum Association and they sent in curators and stuff that knew how to deal with um, old, uh, dresses and stuff that we had a lot of dresses that maybe just had you know a couple inches of water on the bottom so um, they all still had to be cleaned and you have to clean them properly so yep. now this is a room that was redone when uh, we got a grant through the Midland Area Community Foundation and uh, we redid this room. And this room actually tells, you start here and tells about the early inhabitants, like the, the Indians, and then it goes into the logging 
and then it goes into the flood, which we'll have to put some more pictures on from the 2020 flood, and then uh, the businesses, and then schools and stuff. So this this became the what we call the main room, and then this will take you out to the different buildings so that you can see the other you know other other facts. Over here is where we're in the process of drying some of those ledgers that I was talking about. And we'll get them dried out and, and they'll be okay after that. So, but the, it's a pretty good sized complex. Um, you know, again, every lower shelf, you know, took, took quite a bit of water. So about one to two feet on the inside here we had water? Pardon? About one to two feet in here is where no, you had we water. had we only had about seven inches of water in here, and as you can see, all the dioramas and stuff. Um, if you look at the base, there's holes in there. That's so that we could spray uh, decontaminant for mold control and on all all the underneath part of it. Um, we got all done, and like I said, you go back through and, and you're working on it, and uh, we had help from the Grand Rapids guy, and, and we came over here and he said, there's still carpet in there. They, there was still carpet on the floor in there, so we had to get the, all that stuff out of there and get the carpet out and then spray it again, so um, that, that just got missed, you know, that's all there was to it. But all of these, they, they've all been sprayed and, and came through pretty well. The basement was completely flooded. Um, and uh, it took a lot of volunteer hours to, to uh, get it cleaned up and dried and that kind of stuff. And we had help from uh, CMU. They brought over uh, four big uh, de dehumidifiers and we put them in the basement to dry out the basement. And it was very nice of them to, to help us out that way because it was pretty damp down there. These flags were made during the centennial in the Homec uh, room, and uh, so there's a lot of attachment to you know, to these flags from a lot of the you know uh, people in town. And we take all of these. There's 119, I believe, flags, and we put them on the flag wagon, and it leads the parade during Founders Day. So that's where these flags come from. So we call this the Michigan Room because it's got uh, a little bit of everything, you know. Um, of course, the reason Sanford's here is because of the salt. And, you know, one of the reasons, one of the reasons Dow is in, in the area is because the amount of brine has a lot of bromine in it. So that attracted Dow uh, to, to extract the bromine. And they use the salt. The salt used to be worth more than gold at one time. and. Um, because you had to preserve your food with salt. So salt was very important. So they, Holton, the first geologist for the state of Michigan, he attempted to drill the salt well here. And so that's what this diorama talks about here. And uh, I was planning on giving salt seep talks. Um, I know where some of the salt seeps are and I know where the salt well is that he is attempting to drill. The problem with the salt well is it's on private property. The uh, salt seep is actually on uh, public property, and we're going to do a tour over to the salt seep. So, but uh, the flood has got it pretty contaminated right now. And COVID uh, kind of shut everything down as far as giving tours and that kind of stuff. So, we just call this the communication room. It has everything from printing presses to to typewriters, to TVs and radios and, and uh, telephones and you name it, anything they do with communication goes, goes into this room. We call this the town. Um, used to be the post office, which we moved the post office out into the Olson store because in the old days, uh, uh, that's where the post office was, is in the country store. Um, right now we have uh, uh, some rocks and, and, and stuff on display here. One of the 
present, past presidents, father was a geologist, and, uh, and he, this is his rock collection. Um, then you had the saloon. You go from the saloon, you go to the barber shop, to the dentist, to the doctor's office. So this is how it got nicknamed the town. So, and then you come in here. This is just a house, and uh, you go from the kitchen to the parlor, to the dining room, to the main bedroom, to the kids' bedroom, and uh, so a uh, lot of nice artifacts here. It's, um, when we got built the barn annex, we were able to take all the artifacts out of that main room and put them out in the barn annex, and we opened this all up. Used to be little divider rooms, and it's so much more open and airy now. Um, we're in the process of, of making stories that tell about the different artifacts so that uh, you, know, you can just come in and read about them and you wouldn't have to have a tour itself, but you can do a self-tour that way. So that's pretty much the museum. Um, any questions? I can. So have you figured out about the falls picture yet? You know where that was at or? No, I wish I did. I really did uh, do. Um, by the looks of the rapids that, that where the dam was, I would almost say that was probably right there, but I couldn't tell you for sure. I know there's a lot of people analyzing like where the river was and coming yeah. up to it. It does look very similar to where the falls are now is where the dam is sitting yeah. as well. It, it, when you look at the falls picture though, it's a, quite a drop and you just don't see that now, but it, it could get filled in and stuff with all the flooding. So, and it could have been filled in during the, t the construction of the dam too. So um, it's interesting though to, to realize that, that uh, Midland had actually had a falls like that. So, so. Before now, now we just have a miniature falls there. Yeah, <laughs> just a, yeah, more like a rapids now, yeah. you know. So I'm an amateur geologist, so to classify as a falls in, in Michigan, it got dropped four feet, mm -hmm. so it's more of a rapid, so. Edenville would be closer to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Probably right around there. Yeah. It's, uh, well, thank you for your time, and thanks for showing us around here. Oh, you're more than welcome. I appreciate what you're doing, Jordan. It's uh, very helpful to document everything, and, and uh, I'm sure it'll be very useful in the future when people want to look back, so. Yeah, I know there's a couple of people saying, well, you should, I should just bring my videos here and have them on display here. I'm like, I'm completely willing to anyone who wants my videos to be able to display those. That'd be wonderful. Thank you. Thank you to everybody for supporting me, uh, subscribing to my channel, liking and sharing these videos. It does help a lot. If you want to contribute to the efforts here, make sure you visit the Sanford Strong and Edenville Strong Facebook pages. I'll leave the links in the description down below. And if you want to help support my page, I'll also leave my Patreon and PayPal account down below. Thanks for watching and make sure you catch my next video. Until then, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.